everyone. This is Leslie Langna, and I'm with uh, Make Parts Fast, and I'm here at the Rapid TCT Show. I'm here today now with Jonah Meyerberg of Desktop Metal. Thank you for joining with me. My and pleasure. we're going to talk a little bit about desktop metal 3D printing. So last year when you guys were here, you introduced your more desktop version, and now you've expanded. We have, yes. So it's been a long year um, and a healthy 12 months. Um, <laughs> but you'll remember last year, we kind of came out from under the radar yeah. and uh, emerged with two new revolutionary manufacturing systems for metal additive. The first okay. was the studio system, mm -hmm. um, and that's for printing at your desk mm -hmm. where engineers work, mm -hmm. um, and uh, low volume, rapid prototyping. And then when the engineer wants to take that same material and that same design into mass production, they move to our production system. Now, how do you deal with engineering concerns regarding part-to-part -part consistency of this production? Since you're moving into production, that's a big concern for a lot yeah. of engineers. Absolutely. And honestly, it's the way you address it is through printing a lot of parts and understanding <laughs> uh, what your variability is, what you're doing right, and what you're doing wrong. Um, and we've had a year now under our belt okay. of printing a lot of parts for a lot of customers. And so one of the things you'll notice here are a lot of new applications, a lot of new um, case studies from different customers who over the years, over the past year, have had a chance to print with our printers, test our materials, and now are testing their parts in their applications. So have you made changes to your materials? We have. We've refined our materials down from this vast amount of materials who are, that are out there and available to our printing process, to this sintered powdered metal process, and we've reduced it to six core materials what that are those the materials? bulk of our, of our customers are looking for. Can you tell so, me what those materials are? Yes, so there are two stainless steels, okay. uh, the 316L and 174PH. Okay. There is a super alloy, the Inconel 625, copper, and then 4140, which is a, a very high uh, strength engineering uh, carbon alloy. Now, besides that one carbon alloy, are the other materials carbon infused, or? They are, they, everything except for the copper has uh, carbon in it, but all these materials are very sensitive to carbon content and oxygen content, and, and that's really where desktop metal focuses, is on the chemistry, the metallurgy of the material. Yeah. No longer are we making kind of looks like, feels like, fits like parts. Right, right. These are fully functional parts, and it all starts with that microstructure, the metal properties and the chemistry, and then the grain properties um, of the part. So how are you demonstrating the properties for the engineer who maybe is a little hesitant to do something that's not precisely aluminum or stainless steel? Or yes. So we're doing a number of things to help the engineer understand what they get out of the printer. Okay. Um, number one is we're following the standard for metal injection molded parts. Oh, okay. That's MIM35, which is a published standard that's been around for tens of years. Mm -hmm. And that's what engineers use to design a MIM part. So what, do you, what type of properties can you expect out of 17.4 pH? Mm -hmm. Look it up in the standard and understand what that means. They're slightly different than a cast stainless steel, slightly different than a machine or work hardened stainless steel, um, but they exist, and so we follow that standard. So since you're using MIM, is this a process that an engineer could use to replace metal injection molding? They could, yes. Okay. So matter of fact, the same applications that you would attack with MIM, you can now attack with this additive. Like a desktop MIM. metal kind of a 3D printer. That's right. And MIM companies are surprisingly not looking at this as a competitive a competitor in their space. They're looking at it as an enabler. Metal injection molding is traditionally very, very high volume. It yeah. doesn't make a whole lot of sense to invest in tooling unless you're going to make hundreds of thousands or millions of parts. And those same manufacturers can't engage with the customer who wants only a few, maybe a thousand or ten thousand parts. Okay. And now they can. Oh, that's interesting. So with desktop metal technology, they can produce the same properties that they get out of their metal injection molded parts at a lower volume, almost like a gap filler and then grow that customer up into the metal injection molded you know, component. So not only can the individual engineer take advantage of this technology, but metal injection molding companies can purchase these systems and offer this range as well. Absolutely, they're yeah. now able to, cre to create lead generation like never before. Interesting. Yeah, so okay. this is a, uh, it's an application that we didn't really target 
Right. But the MIM companies are coming to us and saying, this is amazing. This allows me to go engage with customers I've never been able to engage with. A whole new field. A whole new field. And we think it's going to, it's going to start there, but it's going to branch off. As soon as they see they're not constrained by injection molding uh, tooling constraints anymore, and they can start to create geometry that's not really yep. mimable, right. um, they'll be able to expand their business even more. Wow, that's kind of fascinating. Yeah, it's really exciting. So for an engineer who want to learn more about this technology, what's your website? DesktopMetal.com. Alrighty, so here's some of the new developments going on at the Rapid TCT Show.